should you call? Okay, so uh, my friend Trevi Moran, who's a big pop star. Well, she's a pop star in YouTube and TikTok arenas. So for like the very young people, Gen Z. Hi, my name is Trevi Moran. I am a transgender female. She's like very known to where she gets bothered in the street. You know, people come up to her and say how much they love her music. Trevi and I were gonna do this article about Gail and she contacted Atlantic Records, which Gail's on, and they said that she wasn't available for an interview, but that they're gonna put us on the list for this like intimate show. So Trevi and I went to the Mercury Lounge on Monday. The show started at 6 p.m. We got there about 6.30 and we didn't really want to see the opener because who cares about an opener, right? But we ended up going in and really liking the guy who opened. A young man named Joe P. That's what he goes by. Yeah, <laughs> Joe P. He's Italian, that's what he said on stage. He said they're all Italian and his band is a bunch of boys. I think they're from New Jersey or from New York area. They're definitely locals. He was really good. Trevi felt like some of his songs sounded like the Pixies, had like a Pixies vibe to it. I surprisingly, like I'm such a post-punk, punk rock, classic rock type of person. And he was more like indie rock, I guess you'd say. More like mellow, lots of love songs. But I really, really enjoyed it. Like, I want to look him up on Spotify and, like, you know, get into his music. He did this cute thing where he, like, bobbed his head, like Ringo Starr or something. It was really cute. But while I was waiting outside for Trevi, I was wearing my black vinyl pants and a stiff record shirt. And there was an older man, maybe, like, in his 50s or 60s, you know, older than me, but my same generation. And he came up to me. And he said, oh my God, oh my God, I used to work for Stiff Records. Can I take a photo of your shirt? And I was like, sure. And he's like, I'm just so happy to see that young people still like Stiff Records. And I'm like, well, I'm old, so. <laughs> I'm old, that's why I like Stiff Records. Maybe young people don't know about it. But that was cute. I felt like a celebrity waiting outside getting my photo taken. And then while we were inside, it was an open show that people could pay $20 to see, so like, there were some really young people. It was 16 plus. And then there was a lot of like people on the list that were Atlantic Records friends. So there was like a mix of teenagers and older people like my age and older. Joe P, he was really, really good. I don't remember what his song names were, but he was really great. My friend Trevi was like really attracted to him. I was attracted to him too. And she was, she was very attracted to the keyboard player. She was like, that keyboard player knows how to fuck. I thought it was funny because he was this little guy, but it, I was like, okay, I guess you know, I don't know. <laughs> then Gail went on, she played a bunch of her newer songs because she has a new album coming out. And she was wearing like plaid pants, like green plaid pants and a little like bra top, black bra top. And she has two tone dyed hair, like half black, half orange. She played a lot of new songs and she apologized to the crowd for playing new songs because obviously they want to hear the hits or whatever. But everything was really good. At one point, Gail talked about, which I've seen Gail before, she talked about paying homage to the women of rock and roll that went before her. I just wanted to do a little cover. If you don't know the song, if you don't know who this is by, that's on you. <laughs> So the last time I saw her, she did like an Alanis Morissette song, but this time was even better because she played a Joan Jett and the Blackheart song, Bad Reputation, which I was like, thank God, you know? <laughs> and I was like, yay, she likes punk. This is great, okay. So she did that and that was like, everyone went off and got really crazy and was cheering.
she played five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She she played thirteen songs in total, and the last one was A B C D E F U. obviously all the phones came out and everyone was like super excited to hear the the hit i thought it was just one week of being number one on the billboard charts but then i looked it up and talked to her about it she said no it was three weeks straight as number one on the billboard charts for that song which is really exciting she played it was awesome he rocked. I heard these people who were like maybe in their 60s, these two women, and they go, this is the last time that we're gonna be able to see this woman in such a small venue. Like this girl is gonna be playing stadium soon. My friend Trevi left. She wasn't feeling very good. I stayed and hoping to talk to Gail. And so she came back out and she was talking to everyone, like hugging all these like teenage girls who were saying that she changed their life and gave them a backbone to say fuck you to the guy that hurt them and stuff. And, it was, and I was standing there, like everyone was like 17, 18, 19, giggling over like men that fucked them over. And I was like, hey, 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 like 42, like <laughs> standing in their circle, just being like, hey. hey, hey. I was like, I wonder if these girls are looking at me like, who's the mom that's like lost from her daughter? Gail kept looking at me and then finally she came over to me and I was like, you did such a great job. I was the bartender at the Knitting Factory before you ever got a number one hit. And I thought, you know, this girl's going places and I was blown away by you. And she said, oh my God, that's so cool you were there. I had a feeling she would get big and now she's like a superstar. I said, did you ever read the book, Please Kill Me? Which is about the punk rock scene of like the 70s in New York City, like CBGBs and Joey Ramone and all those people. And she said, no, I never read it. And I was like, well, it's literally my favorite book of all time. Gail took out her phone and she wrote down, Please Kill Me and McNeil. I was like, I work for Legs who wrote that book. So she was like, I'm definitely reading that because she's obviously punk influenced, even though it is kind of Pop. Her attitude is punk, you know? So then I took a video of her saying what it's like to be on the Billboard charts three weeks in a row. Hi, I'm Gail, and I just, I literally, words can't describe how grateful I am to have been on the Billboard charts and be in the number one spot. I'm very competitive, and I love being number one in things, especially multiple weeks in a row. It is truly just an honor and a dream come true. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. And she gave me a hug. She was just very warm. And she just kept saying how nice it was to meet me. And she gave me three hugs. <laughs> and it was just really sweet. And she's this very beautiful, gorgeous young woman. And she had X's on her hands, you know, which I thought was very cute because she's 17. So she literally can't drink in the place that she's headlining, you know, the bar she's headlining, which is very funny. Then I go, I'll let you talk to your other friends because there's a lot of people staring at her wanting to talk to her, like the whole room, basically. So then I walked away and I texted my friend Trevi, you know, Gail came outside to talk and she's talking to people and hugging people. And, and she said, I'll be right there, five minutes. They've DM'd before. And so Trevi came back. It was cute because Trevi's like, she's somewhat of a celebrity. So like, I just thought it was cute because Trevi was obviously very scared to go up to Gail because Gail was talking to people. And I'm not, I'm just like, I'm here. You're talking to me, you know? <laughs> I go, just go in there. You just got to get get in the school of people and she'll talk to you next. So then Gail turns around, was staring at Trevi, finally says goodbye to the friends she was talking to. And she walks over and she took her mask off and said, I am such a huge fan of yours. I am like shaking that you're at my show wow, I've been following you since I was like 13. I've been watching your videos on YouTube and I saw you on, Trevi was on a show like America's Got Talent. I don't know if she won, but she was like, 
on a TV show for her singing. And she said, I watched you on your TV show. I've watched you on YouTube. She turned bright red and was just like smiling ear to ear. Like, I'm so happy you're here. Trevi asked if she could take a TikTok with her, which is the platform where Gail really got really big. So Gail and Trevi did a song together on TikTok. Like they mouthed some song. Yeah. It was just really, really sweet. Gail started following Trevi on TikTok and Trevi left and <laughs> texted me, oh my God, she's following me on TikTok. And I said, maybe you'll be her opening act on tour yeah. now. You know, like who knows what's going to happen with this. Yeah. That's basically what happened. 